Hello, everyone. Today we're going to have an amazing session. Uh, I see that we have a full house. I'm super, super excited. In the, you know, it, it took me a while to get a full house on my webinar, so I'm, I'm super excited and I thank you for it. Uh, we're going to talk about marketing, as you can understand. The session is one hour, but we'll try to make it in 30 minutes, and that's it. So we're starting with the first one. Uh, Google My Business. If you don't have Google My Business, you have a big problem in your business. You must have this tool. I created a separated video on how to create Google My Business step-by-step. Step. Uh, I will add the link to, uh, to the YouTube, so you can click on it and take the video. If you already have Google My Business, please optimize it. So what I mean by optimizing it, everybody say you need to optimize, optimize, but what it really means. Now, optimize it really means that you need to do two things. One, you need to keep your Google My Business up to date. Every single item that exists on the Google My Business needs to be updated. Now, if you don't have the details, for example, one of the fields is store ID or store number. If you're a one-man show and you have only one store, you don't need to edit this field. But for sure, you need to have your, your store hours up to date. You need to mark if you're accepting customers to your office or not. If you're driving to them, what will be your, your, your targeting area, the radius you're willing to drive, or what city. You need to upload photos. You need to tell your customers to upload photos to your, to your listing so the listing will be live. All those are very, very important. Now, that's lots of work. I get it. I understand. So you can tell me it's lots of work, Lee, or what you're doing here. I'm already overwhelmed. But if you will do that, you will get three things. You will get positions on your local map, which means if someone is searching for your services on Google Maps, you will see your business. This is priceless. 70% of the traffic that's coming from mobile is searching on Google Maps. 70% are using the Google Maps listing. That's absolutely crazy. So you, you can actually have lots of, lots of quality traffic coming back to you. Second, you will show when someone will search your company name, and usually your competition will be on the AdWords side, because everybody wants to take your business, you will have on the right side, you will have a huge area with your brand, with your company name. It will take third of the page. It's a huge real estate with your brand. It's absolutely worth it. Now, the third thing, you're getting position on the Google organic results. So this is extremely, extremely important. You must have Google My Business. Now, if you did everything I just said, which probably you didn't because most businesses are not up to date with their Google My Business, then perfect. If you did it perfect, let's skip to the next, next stage. But if you didn't, please make sure to schedule in your calendar right now. Yes, right now, right now, you're going to schedule in your calendar two hours to go over your Google My Business and optimize it, okay? If you want more details, click on the link below to go to the Google My Business uh, video that I've created in advance. And just it's step-by-step, step, that easy. Skip the registration process, which is probably half of the video, and then go only to the optimization step, okay? That's very, very important. Next, offline and online advertisement. Offline will be any kind of advertisement that is not digital. It will be buses, it will be billboards, signs, flyers, everything. And the other half will be the digital. It will be online, websites, banner, pop-ups, everything that is online. Google Pay Per Click, organic, all that is online. Now, what you need to understand from my personal experience working with probably thousands of advertisers in the last decade, I can tell you that offline doesn't work. 
the amount of time and money that you, 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 you put in getting traffic from the offline, and if you take exactly the same amount of time and money and you put it in the online, you will get in the online much, much more, as long as you know what you're doing. Okay, it's important. Now, if you don't know what you're doing and you don't want to use the services of someone like myself, just make sure you're testing everything. So let's say if you want to create a Google AdWords campaign and don't, don't start with a thousand bucks of advertisement, start with hundred bucks with few specific keywords and make sure those keywords generate deals. I didn't say leads because I don't believe in leads. Leads is bullshit. Deals are real. My bank account is consuming money and money is coming from deals, not from leads. Leads generate more work in my office. So I don't like leads so much. I'm okay with leads that generating me deals. Make sense? We're talking about deals, not about leads. Okay, in, in a beautiful world, I would pay only for deals. So let's say every time that someone is buying my Adidas shoes, I will pay 20 bucks to the person that brought me this deal. But as a small business, it, there is a good chance that you are a small business, no one will put your banner on their website. Who are you? Okay, I, I was not successful in getting my banners in a paper action model, which means I'm paying only for deals, I was not successful in doing so. But if you are successful in doing so, do only that. Don't spend dime on anything else, okay? But I was not able to, to make it happen for myself. Now, big question for you. If I would tell you that for 100 bucks, I will give you 100,000 visitors to your website would you take the deal i want to see thumbs up if you're okay to give me 100 bucks and in return i will give you 100,000 visitors if you're okay with that deal i want to see thumbs up right now right now beautiful oh my god scary okay so 78 percent of the people in this webinar are okay to give me 100 bucks in return to 100,000 visitors. So for all of you that says, yes, you're okay to give me 100 bucks, you did a huge mistake, huge mistake. Now that's how it works. First of all, you can buy it for six bucks. This is Canadian, so it's five bucks US on Fiverr. You can get 99,000 people so you already lost 95 bucks because I bought it for five. And that's, by the way, what, what many marketing companies are doing. They're selling you something that they bought for five bucks, just, you know, they, they buying it for five and selling it for 100 or even thousand bucks. The thing is the traffic that you're getting bullshit. It's not helping you. It's even damaging your website. So let me show you how it works. When you have bad traffic, the bad traffic results lots of frustration because the person that is going to your website, if it's a real person, most of the time it's only bots, it's not even people, is consuming your bandwidth of the website, you pay more to your hosting company, or if it's a real person, is going to your website and is doing nothing, which means is coming in and bouncing out. So the eye bounce rate is being, uh, you, you, you're getting eye bounce rate because people or those bots are not going to more and more pages. Now, let's say I have 100,000 people. They're coming to my website. They look around, they go to different pages. That's perfect. Google see it as a positive vote because people are going to my website and continue to search for more pages. That's a normal user behavior that likes my website. From the other side, imagine that 100,000 people coming to my website, they're looking at one page and bounce back. 
which means they are leaving my website. That's a vote against my website. Imagine that you have a store and someone walks to your store, looks around and bounces back. It's a vote against your store. It didn't like what it saw. In Google terms or in search engine terms, it means it was searching for something. It didn't get what it needed and it went back. That's a vote against your website. Now, for this specific search term, let's say in my business, it's marketing strategy, and someone is clicking on this keyword, goes to my website and bouncing out, Google knows not to promote me in this specific keyword because I got a vote against me. When you're buying traffic and you're buying, uh, you know, for five, it doesn't really matter how much money you spend, many bad things happen to you. So don't buy traffic, okay? Don't. Don't waste it. It's not about the five bucks or the hundred bucks. It's about that that you're damaging your website by killing the bounce rate. Okay? It's not for you. You pay more for, for hosting fees because you will have massive amount of traffic. And from the other side, the bounce rate is going up and your ranking is going down. It's just bad. So don't buy traffic. And if you work with marketing companies, don't believe them that, you know, to all the reports that they're giving you. Ask questions. Be smart. Okay? The more questions you ask, the more they will know that they cannot mess with you. There are many good marketing companies out there. You just need to filter which one is good and which one is not. Whenever we analyze clients' websites, we see the same thing again and again and again and again and again, and it's just amazing. You will see that they're paying much more, uh, much more money than what they should on their media, which means they will pay, let's say, they're supposed to be thousand bucks for hundred visitors, but they paying you know, five thousand bucks. So it's it's excessive marketing budget. You will see that the marketing expense per client acquisition is just insane. Same. It's much, much higher than what it should. And it's because the, the settings in the account are incorrect. For example, uh, let's say in AdWords, you have one setting. So one setting will be what is your geographic area. Now, my clients, let's say they're coming only from New York. So I will, write, I will give Google the definition that I want to get customers only from New York. And that's fine. Now, most marketing companies and people will just do that. But there is another setting that needs to be set, but people don't know about it. And this setting will say, do you want people from New York City, people that actually live in New York City to come to your website? Or do you want also people that searching for New York City, which means someone in Turkey or Afghanistan, or Pakistan, or Iran, or, or you know, China that's looking for dentists in New York if you want also this guy to get the results. And you will see that just one setting will change dramatically the amount of people that's coming to your website, the bounce rate, because someone in China that sees, you know, an advertisement from for a dentist in New York probably is not for him, right? So once he's going and, and, and watching your website, he will bounce out. So the bounce rate will be very high. And the result is you're paying more money, you're getting high bounce rate, you pay more for your advertisement because the bounce rate is high, so Google will charge, will charge premium on showing your advertisement. It's all against you, and everything is from one small setting, okay? So you need, you, you need to make sure that whenever you advertise, you make sure yourself, if you don't have anyone that will help you create a proper account, make sure that everything is legit and all the settings are in place. You will need to do some research, research about it. Don't believe the experts, okay? Because they, they may be, they are experts, but they don't care about you. They care about their money to work as less as possible and to get as much as possible, okay? Now, excessive spending on sales agents, phone calls, and so on. So imagine that you have 
a bad marketing campaign and the campaign is generating lots and lots of leads, but the leads are the, the leads quality is very low. It's bad quality. The advertisement will say uh, Invisalign 1,900. And people will start, and it's, it's a real example, by the way, from one of my clients. That, uh, he had a different marketing company that advertised Invisalign for 1,900 just to have more people coming to his website. Now, the main problem with that, the price is not 1,900. The price is 3000 because you need Invisalign and the retainer is more money and there is a line you need to put on your teeth after, which is a little bit more money. And the, the, uh, if you need more than one uh, examination, it's uh, more money. Eventually, it's 3000 bucks. Okay. Now, people are calling for 1900 They're using the customer, uh, the, the sales center time. They're using the website time, they're sending leads, it's creating lots and lots of work. But eventually from 50 people that are calling in, only one is being converted. And actually the people are angry, so they also leave bad reviews because they're expected for 1900 But you told them now 3000 The 1900 is only for the base, base, base. And no one can use only the base for Invisalign. You need more services than only the trades. And that's a problem. So the business have lots of work, is not able to concentrate on quality deals because he's dealing with shitty leads. And the result is you have massive amount of manpower working for nothing because he's not able to convert the deals. So what I want to, to emphasize is that businesses supposed to have proper sales cycle and proper marketing it's not only about bringing the people to the door. There need to be also intention. And the intention is what's important. Now, when you, have, when you have shitty leads, it will change your projections and it will change also your marketing. So as you can see from one small crea creative idea that someone gave you on, on having Invisalign for 1900, it changed your marketing campaigns, your sales, your office culture, frustration in the office, and so on and so on. Company reputation, it's all coming from one small place. So this is exactly why I'm running all those sessions. I want to educate you how to make a smart move. It's critical that you will know it. Targeting is another huge point, and targeting, you know, unless, you know, even if you, your product is matching the entire planet, still you need to target because your budget is limited. Now you need to start with an area that's matching your client. Most people will say, you know, I'm, I'm selling coffee. This coffee is for everyone. But it's not true. Let's say that your coffee is organic. Let's say your coffee is, is green. So you have specific packets, let's say in New York, you will have specific packets of you know, small areas that you know that those people walk with their dogs and you know, with the little lemon and, and they have the shake in the morning, the smoothie. You know that those people are green people. So why would you advertise to New York when you can advertise to this specific packet of people, of those 100,000 people that you know that based on the parks and based on their area, there is a, they are more likely to buy your green organic coffee. So everything needs to be in mind with marketing. You cannot just market. You need to think about it. You need to be smart on how you market and build a proper plan, okay? So as you can see here, you have an area and you need to know exactly where you're going to advertise. Now, once you're targeting the area and the target is good, you will get more leads and in result, you will get also more clients. When you have no targeting, you will create frustration because let's say, and that's, I, I saw it endless time, someone is calling and saying, hey, do you sell you know, computers? Yes, we are. Oh, perfect. Amazing. How much is the laptop? And there is a 
you know, 15 minutes of conversation and the client says, perfect. When can I come to pick up the laptop? And they will say, come this afternoon, it will be ready. We just charge your, your credit card, it's all good. You can come over in five hours, pick up your laptop. And he will say, where is the address? And they will say, we're on 63 Avenue in Richmond, Ontario. The client will say, what? I'm in Pennsylvania. What do you mean, Richmond in Ontario? Where is it? And then you will see 15 minutes of sales cycle, great sales cycle, that went for nothing. Now, the client spent 15 minutes, is absolutely frustrated as hell. The salesman just lost the commission. Everybody's angry. And just because the marketing company did a bad mistake, okay? Targeting is critical for your business. Now, there are many things in business that you will see them as a big cave and there is noise from the cave. You, you hear noises. And it sounds crazy and you're so afraid. What, what's in this dark hole? What's going on there? You know, it's insane. I'm so afraid. And if you relate it to business, you will see that marketing, you will see that bookkeeping, you will see that customer service, there are different areas in business that business owners want to stay away from because it's scary. There are unknown factors that, that, that affecting our decision-making, and it's just scary. I prefer to give 2000 bucks to someone that he will do it for me. But when you go inside the cave, with the light, you will see a small chihuahua just shouting, and because of the echo of the cave, it just sounds like a big animal. Arr! But it's really, it's small, but we just make it big. Same thing with marketing, customer service, accounting, and so on and so on. It's very easy once you start to play with it. So now you're taking this webinar. It means you're, doing your, you're taking your first step into trying to understand what marketing is all about. And from what I see in the comments below, I see that people are actually liking what they hear and it's not that scary anymore. So I'm, I'm, I love it. And of course, you can always ask me more questions. Now, there is one big thing that I, 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 I just don't get it. Even going to the washroom for a number two, yes, number two, you have a solid plan. Going to the washroom, you take your pants off, you sit, you do what you need to do, you clean yourself, you flush, you go out of the room. Actually, you wash your hands going out of the, of the washroom. That's the process. It's a very precise process. Imagine that you would do this process in a different way. Imagine that you just miss taking your pants off and you sit with your pants and continue the process. It will be an horrible result. How come that as a business owner, we do things all the time without pre planning it, without preparing for the result, without even knowing what we, we like to see? That's absolutely insane. So every time you're starting an emotional move in your business and you don't plan it, remember the number two, because you're going to shit in your pants and that's not good for you or your business. And if you're a small company, it's also not fair for your family because they, they, they are sending you to work every day so you will support them. It's very important. You need to remember that all the time. When you're making a stupid move, you're shitting in your own tent, okay? Plan in advance. Be results-oriented. It's all about results. There is no business move that's not related and connected to clear results. So I want to show you there are five things that will make someone buy, and you can use them in your advertisement. So one will be the social effect. I also want one. I saw Lior with T 
Tim Hortons coffee. I saw Josh with Tim Hortons coffee. And I saw also Jenny picking up a Tim Hortons coffee. Everybody buys Tim Hortons. I want also one. And then I will buy it. Now, it's all being done, done, done in the subconscious. So it's important to understand it's not things that people actually plan for it. Now, if you have an advertisement of one person standing and drinking Tim Hortons, probably you want to have five people that are drinking Tim Hortons and not only one, because then you're also creating the social effect, right? So a group is much more stronger than individual. So that's the first thing. The second one is the empty cup. The empty cup is a concept from the Jewish Kabbalah, and it's very interesting. People are like, like a cup. They're just vessels. And sometimes the vessel is empty. You wake up in the morning and you feel not good. And you need something to change it. Most people will take the credit card and they will swipe it. So you start this bad feeling in the morning. You will say, you know what? I'm buying a new computer right now. And you start to feel a little bit better because now you're planning to fill your cup. And then you're driving to the mall and you're feeling a bit better. And you go and you, you know, run into, into the store and it's a great feeling. And if you talk to the salesperson and he shows you this computer and it's the function and it's a phenomenal feeling. You take the computer to the, to the cashier and then you swipe the credit card and that's the best feeling you can have. From that point on, the feeling is going down because your cup is becoming empty again. Because you, 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 you fill your cup with something that's not supposed to be there. If you had a 10 seconds hug, there is a very good chance it will benefit you much more than buying this laptop. Now, most people buy things just because they're empty. And now it's 2018. I can tell you that most people are absolutely empty. They're more depressed and they feel bad and everything is just wrong. So the empty cup, as a marketer, it's a big thing for me. So I need to fulfill people's needs. You fulfill what it's missing. So if you will put some emotions into your advertisement, you will see you change. So don't have static ads. Make them emotional. Make it something that the, the person that's reading your advertisement or seeing the picture can get connected to it. Not by mistake, when you look at advertisement on TV, you will have few groups. It's all people walking, smiling, holding hands. This is very emotional, it's nice. You will see young couple walking, holding hands, smiling, usually on the beach, because that's something that's connecting emotionally and it feels great. You will see, uh, you know, a father or mother swinging their kids. It's always the same. Anything, you will see a baby, you know, a baby, an, an, an infant, so pure and clean. All those things are making our emotions go nuts. And when your emotion goes nuts, you don't have a guard anymore. You don't say, I, am, I don't think I'm going to buy it. It's re reducing the, the, your guard, and then you're more open to spend money, okay? It's all, um, it's all planned. It's not someone, you know, just searching for a picture and just putting it. There was planning behind it. Remember number two, huh? Same thing. Don't shit in your pants. So someone else already did the homework for it. There is also the third thing will be a real need. So let's say my mixer is broken. I need to replace it. Now, surprisingly, most of the, from all the five uh, all the five ways that we're actually buying things, real need is the lowest one. Most people don't buy because something is broken. You don't see women going and buying new pants because they can't use it anymore. They're buying the new pants because of an emotional need. 
So the real need is not something that I am even targeting, except in my appliance repair company, we always use real need because it's really people. No one is fixing his appliance just because they want to. They fix in their plans because they must. So in that case, we're using real need, but in, in most businesses that I worked with, there is no need to use real need. Fear is a huge emotional need. So fear, all the, every, every security related advertisement that, that's doing a good job will be related to fear. You will see thieves coming in, breaking windows. You will see things that emotionally you will want to make the next move. And fear is, is huge. Now, I'm not a big fan of scaring people, but if you have a business that's related to securing people, life insurance, whatever it is, you need to use fear to move them to the right direction. As long as you're selling the right product and you can actually give value to your clients. Okay, I'm not saying it to scare them and give them nothing. I'm saying if you need to scare them uh, just so they can make a, a proper uh, decision, that, that's something that you can do. Now, the last thing is people buy identity. I will have my iPhone. I will have my, my MacBook. Uh, I'm using my, my uh, Apple Watch. I'm an Apple person because I see Apple as a solid brand. I drive Mercedes 43 AMG because I'm, I connect myself to fast quality things. I buy things because I connect to something. Most people will buy things because they connect to something. They connect themselves to a different identity. If you know that your people are high class people, maybe you want to show in your advertisement things that they relate to it. Expensive cars, expensive watch, suits, something that makes sense for people that want to spend big money. If you're targeting an hundred thousand bucks product and you show simple people like you and me, that can be a problem. You need to show someone that is a rich person. You need to show ex very expensive cars. You need to show things that the person that's watching the advertisement will say, you know what? It makes sense. I can see myself using this product. Okay? You connect with identity. So we really covered many, many different topics in this 30-something minutes. I want you to start to take everything that we talked about open your calendar and start, start to write down what you're going to do with this information, how you're going to market yourself, how you're going to, to create proper ads, who is your market, who are the people you're going to work with. I want to see you taking action on those things. Don't let it be just a lecture. Make it as a workshop. Make something out of it. Now, our next lecture will be about landing pages. With the landing pages, we're going to talk about how to create a proper landing page. What needs to be on the landing page so it will convert. And also how to track the people that you send into the landing page so those people actually converted to leads or maybe even deals. It's very important because imagine you're spending 1000 bucks on a landing page and you spend another thousand bucks on the advertisement and you have no clue if someone even bought using this landing page. It will be horrible, right? So that's what we're going to do on the second lecture. I will see you soon. I'm going to grab my team order and uh, we'll talk soon.